Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point was the world's first aerodynamics hypercoaster and the world's first hyper to be built in 1989. The ride stands at a height of 205 feet, classifying it as a hypercoaster, which is a term that Cedar Fair took and used on Magnum XL200 when it opened. And now, nowadays, the term of the hypercoaster is used on everything else from the BM hyper to even intimate hypercoaster. The term of the hypercoaster is basically a coaster between the height of 200 feet and 299 feet and magnum has a height of 205 feet which classifies it as a hypercoaster now over the years we have seen the term hypercoaster be changed up a little bit especially with some coasters not staying 200 feet but having a 200 foot drop we can really do see this with the giga term with orion from king's island but and we're not talking about that one we're talking about the original hypercoaster magnum xl 200 now let's talk about this ride this ride was built supposed to be a togo style coaster it was actually inspired by bandit from Muri land i think it is in japan and it really does look impressive and this one's really impressive but let's get into where this coaster is located at cedar point there are four different entrances of course you have the main gate the wind seeker gate the devour even gate and the magnum gate this look coaster is actually located right next to the hotel so you can actually see this from the hotel and the uh, main gate over there is right next to the coaster but if you're entering through the main gate you would have to walk all the way past through the main midway right back corkscrew continue past dragster and then magnum is right there or if you enter the magnum gate the entrance is literally just right around the corner but overall the coaster has a really nice presentation i do think the coaster looks nice it's tucked away the entrance like the, the entrance isn't in like the biggest area there's just a nice small sign and that's about it but overall from like the roadways and all that the coaster looks fantastic i love that right track with the white supports or the gray supports i'm not that sure what color they are but overall magnum xl 200 looks absolutely amazing with this paint scheme that's one thing i really do like about this coaster now the thing in my eyes though may either make or break magnum for you is its trains the trains have three rows per car and it can sit up to nine people this ride to capacity monsters when it's running all three trains you probably do not want to sit on a wheel seat if you do not like rough rides because this is a pretty rough coaster on a wheel seat which i love it personally but i think what will make or break your ride on this coaster is its lap bar this is the unpadded lap bar what they basically did is arrow basically took their mine train coaster train design like found on cedar creek mine ride or even gemini and they literally just made it look like a hyper coaster train the lap bars are on padded which could either make or break your ride it actually you can get some really good room between them like i was getting some crazy ejector airtime on those final run of triangle hills but it will hurt you so if you don't like that type of airtime you will probably not like magnum as much as some other people do out there like it is not that type of ride for graceful airtime this thing has painful thigh crushing ejector personally me i love that but i know some people do not but let's get into that this ride experience you're going to exit out of the station into a little dip and turn into the lift hill this this lift hill I love has the classic arrow sound. Let me just play a little bit of a clip for you. I love that lift hill sound to be honest. I can listen to it for hours, but the lift hill climb is pretty slow and you do to get some really nice views of Lake Erie from the top of it. And after you crest that lift hill, you start going down your 195 foot drop. This drop in the front row doesn't really give any sort of air time, but in the back row, you get a pretty nice pop of ejector that turns into foot or down the drop. This drop is very fun and pretty janky, which I really like. The bottom of the valley for some reason actually is quite forceful. And then after this, after the first drop in that very intense valley, you you're going to rise up into this very drawn out big massive airtime hill this airtime hill doesn't really give airtime if you're in the front two cars you'll actually get a pretty nice pop of ejector going into it but the rest of it there is absolutely no airtime except for the train shuffling which i love this airtime hill doesn't really give anything if you're not in the front car so yeah let's move on then you're going to dive into a tunnel love the tunnels on magnum and then you're going to fly up into a massive speed hill in my opinion this is the best moment on of air time in cedar point and on magnum xl 200 this airtime moment is so sustained if you're in those front cars and back cars it is insane ejector i love this moment and then you're going to go into this awkward banking into this turnaround you are actually going to see some trim breaks and you will you will most likely engage in those trim breaks i was very fortunate because i got last train the night on one of my on one of my nights on at cedar point and they turned off the trims for us and it was absolutely crazy this turnaround pulls some awesome laterals especially when it's trimless the turnaround overall is really fun it's a bit janky but i really like it the turnaround is very fun it's a very nice looking element and overall it's pretty smooth especially for aero transitions and then you're going to finally hit the part of the ride you're going to begin the sequence by going into a tunnel yes a tunnel 
but it actually has a pretty good pop of ejector if the trims are off and then you're going to rise up into another triangle style hill these aren't the crazy triangles but they are pretty good flutters flutter moment if the train trims are on but if the trims are off it's standing ejector especially in the magic seat then you're going to hit another quick turn this will actually start sending you back towards the brake run no, this is an out and back coaster. And then you hit the run of triangle hills. These are three consecutive airtime hills in a row. And you can get standing ejector airtime. It is absolutely insane. All these airtime moments are perfect. These are the most painful airtime moments on, on this ride and in the park. This is what I mean by the thigh crushing airtime. This is it right here. It is absolutely insane. After you clear these three hills, you'll then head into another tunnel with a really cool smoke and light effect, which then slow slams you into the brake run now when i was at cedar point one of my rides was actually to where we actually set to where we actually set it up on the brake run we came to a slamming stop which is quite hurt it hurts but if it doesn't and the rolling trains perfectly you'll go you'll just glide right through that brake run and that ends your ride experience on magnum xl 200 now it is time to tell you what my personal score and how i rank magnum xl 200 in my top 25 magnum xl 200 after my first ride i didn't really like it as much as i was hoping to i was actually quite disappointed with the ride experience and i thought the ride was brutally rough i thought corkscrew was smoother than that they're not saying something but then i got multiple rides later and i now absolutely love the attraction i think it is one of their best coasters if you watch my top 15 coasters from this park it is actually ranked at the number two spot that's how good it is so this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody but this is an absolute 10 out of 10 this is in my opinion a perfect hyper coaster is it my favorite hyper does this one out outrank mako i do not think this one outranks mako yet for me but it's actually one spot exactly apart in my top 25 rankings. Right now, Magnum XL 200 ranks at my number nine spot, which is an absolutely amazing spot for me, especially for running over 100 different roller coasters. Out of all the coasters I've ridden, out of 111, this ride places right in my top 10, which is absolutely amazing. You have to be in an absolutely a phenomenal roller coaster to even do that, and this ride is. So, obviously, a 10 out of 10, nothing asked, no doubts, no buts. I do think now I do prefer Mag Maverick just because I was thinking about it. The amazing transitions. But I will have a review soon on that one. Hopefully. But that is going to do it for today's video. Please like, subscribe, and comment down below what's your opinions of Magnum. Do you guys like Magnum as much as me? Do you guys rank it in your top 15s or top 25s? Leave all those thoughts down in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next video. And bye everyone.